David Ben-Gurion. What do we really know about this short man, but of great stature? Strong-willed, visionary leader who liked to stand on his head. Ben-Gurion was born in 1886 in Goat Alley in the Polish town of Plonsk, which is where he first dreamed of independence for the Jewish people in the land of Israel. Even when he was still young, he was able to visualize the greater picture, and he understood that the Hebrew language was the basis through which to awaken patriotism among the Jews. So, in 1900, he and a few friends established the Ezra Youth Movement. The goal was to strengthen the knowledge of Hebrew in their town, and also to teach the language to poor children. However, there was considerable opposition among the leaders of the Jewish community in Plonsk to Ezra's activities. About a year later, its members looked for other fields of activity, but Ben-Gurion did not give up. He started his political journey by joining the Poilet Zion Party and making Aliyah to the Land of Israel in 1906. On his second day in the Land of Israel, he started working in the orchards of Petach Tikva and strongly believed that Jews must work the land and settle the country. <laughs> ben Gurion understood that work and the laborers would be the key to promoting the struggle for independence. The working class would lead the nation. Ben Gurion worked tirelessly to realize his vision the unification of all of the workers in Israel into one organization. And in fact, in 1920, the various labor groups united and the General Federation of Workers in Israel, the Histradrut, was established. Ben-Gurion was elected secretary a year after the Histradrut was established and remained one of its pioneering leaders. Under his leadership, the Histadrut and the workers became the backbone of Jewish settlement and the Zionist movement. Ben-Gurion pursued his goal with determination and became the national leader who turned his vision into reality. In 1937, when the British proposed a plan for the partition of the land of Israel, Ben-Gurion recognized that they were being offered a window of opportunity to establish the Jewish state, even if that meant a compromise over the size of the country. According to that same perception of the greater picture, Ben-Gurion concluded that the establishment of the state depended, first and foremost, on its ability to defend it. Therefore, in 1946, he accepted the defense portfolio and conducted a seminar. He taught himself about the subject of security over several months and prepared the groundwork for establishing a regular army of Jews to defend the country, the IDF. On November 29, 1947, the United Nations approved the partition plan. But, as Ben-Gurion had feared, the War of Independence broke out very soon after that and he undertook the leadership position. Ben-Gurion understood that Jerusalem, which was under siege, was of huge symbolic and practical significance. So in the spring of 1948, he gave the command for Operation Nachshon to break through the siege of the city, and he insisted on concentrating forces from all over the country to this end, despite the misgivings of the military commanders. After tenacious combat, the operation succeeded and became a turning point in the war. In May 1948, Ben-Gurion declared independence, becoming the first prime minister of the state of Israel. He spearheaded a policy of ingathering of the exiles, and the population doubled within four years. Now, thousands of immigrants had to be settled, and Ben-Gurion aspired to establishing an ideal society in the land of Israel. In 1953, Ben-Gurion decided to retire from the premiership and to go up to Stey Boker in the Negev. Here, he yearned for a simple life, working the land. And he set about fulfilling another vision, pioneering and making the desert wilderness blossom. Thus, the boy who, in Plonsk, had dreamed of a Hebrew-speaking town became the leader who, against all odds, brought about the establishment of a homeland for the Jewish people in the land of Israel. Ben-Gurion knew how to look into the future with determination and optimism, or, in his own words, dare, persevere, succeed.